Hey everybody! I am so happy to finally upload another illustration video again. After 4 or 5 journaling videos in a row it feels like it has been an eternity. Also, as a person who gets bored very easily, I am pretty much sick of journaling videos at this point, if I am allowed to say that. If you have any August theme suggestions though, please let me know. I felt very surprised when I realized that we are already halfway through the month again. But let's talk a little bit about this illustration. I must admit I'm really proud of the idea and I think it's probably the cutest thing I ever created. Spending some time drawing for fun in my sketchbook, I realized that besides character design I enjoy food illustrations a lot so I thought it would be fun to combine different dishes with different animals which is definitely not a new idea but I wanted to try it out. Anyway the first thing I actually wanted to draw was a snake or one of those noodly dragons in a bowl or a cup of noodles and I probably still want to do that too. I have only a few empty spreads left in my current sketchbook and I don't know how you feel about that but the last few pages are the hardest to fill for me. But at the same time I want to finish it so bad. On top of that I'm kind of in an art block right now and it's that one where I'm still motivated to draw but I have no ideas and also nothing I draw is turning out very well. So what I'm trying to do to get through this is drawing the most basic stuff to just keep going until it gets better or easier eventually. And one day I drew some stupid pet water bottles and got the idea for this illustration. And now I actually love it so much that I kinda want to turn it into one of these cool transparent stickers. Sometimes the best ideas come to you when you're drawing the most basic stuff. And yes, it is kind of weird that the little dragon has arms but no legs. But I couldn't make it work with legs. I tried in my sketchbook and it looked kind of cute but I couldn't make them fit into the bottle if that makes sense. Money also suggested to leave out the arms then too, but honestly isn't it just too adorable how he's hugging the seaweed? So can we just pretend that he has legs and we just can't see them because they are hidden somewhere behind the seaweed or his own body? I like to imagine that this dragon is a little baby river spirit who became friends with a human and he wants to see the world outside his river, so his best friend carries him around in a water bottle to show him. For this illustration I'm using my Ohuhu alcohol based markers and a Faber-Castell polychromos colored pencil in the color Helio Blue Reddish. And in the end I'm drawing the outlines using a Tombow Fudenoske soft tip brush pen and for the highlights I'm using a white Artistro acrylic paint pen. Since all the colors I'm using are more on the cooler side, the final illustration is maybe lacking a bit of warmth. Personally it doesn't bother me too much and I was too afraid to ruin it by adding some pink or red, but maybe I'll take a photo and try it out digitally later. I don't know if you can tell by the footage, but the piece of marker paper I'm drawing on has some weird dimensions to it. When I was almost done with the sketch I somehow spilled some water on it and I didn't even notice at first, but lazy as I am I didn't want to draw it again so I just cut the edges. 
Also the drawing is a little bit off-centered and also a bit slanted, but let's try not to be perfectionists today, can we? By the way, most of the footage is speeded up three times, except for the line art, which is seven times faster. And everything I'm doing in this video actually took a little bit more than one hour and a half, just in case you'd like to know. But let's talk a bit more about sketchbooks and art block. I'm very curious about your tips and tricks. How do you feel about the last pages of a sketchbook? What is your favorite thing to draw when you don't know what to draw? And what are your experiences with Artblock and what helps you to get over it? As I mentioned earlier, the last few pages of a sketchbook are the hardest to fill for me. And I think that actually doesn't make sense in my opinion. It should be motivating to finish it. But it seems that when I'm close to the end of a sketchbook, I put too much pressure on myself to fill it as soon as possible, which takes toll on my creativity. It's only my third real sketchbook I'm filling, so take it with a grain of salt when I say it is always like that. But for the first one, I just left the last like five spreads empty or used them just for some swatches and I filled the second one completely, but I've been especially struggling with the last few pages and this time it's just the same again. On top of that, my recent sketchbook is like almost A4 size, so if I start a spread and don't like it right away, it's so hard to fill because there's so much empty space. But also, it is just a sketchbook. It's there for fun and for practice and it is actually not important how the spreads turn out at all. In my case, there are already a lot of spreads I don't like. So why do I care so much? It's so weird. I think my biggest problem is that there are too many options and I'm the most indecisive person on earth. The amount of things you can draw is literally unlimited. You know that one restaurant that has so many dishes on their menu and every single one of them sounds great? It's overwhelming. So what I'm doing in this situation is I pick the same dish as always, every single time. But that doesn't really work for drawing, because it eventually gets boring to draw the same thing over and over again, and it's not the best thing to improve either. By the way, I also don't really recommend doing that in the restaurant situation either. It just keeps you from trying new things that you might like even more. So what helps me the most with this problem is to make myself think that I don't have a choice. That sounds very harsh at first, but it really helps. There are different ways to make that work. You can ask someone else, for example. A friend, a family member or your Instagram followers if you're active on social media. If you don't want to ask anyone, open Pinterest and draw the first picture that comes up. Or use a random number generator and draw the picture on the place of whatever number comes out. Or use a prompt generator. You can also just look around at home and draw whatever object catches your eye first. It may be boring, but it also may be unexpectedly fun. And even if it is boring, that's when I think about what I prefer drawing the most, just like it was with drawing the water bottles, they were unexpectedly fun to draw and also made me come up with the idea of this illustration. Nevertheless, all of these methods have the same disadvantage to them. The initial feeling is not the best one because you're forcing yourself to draw something you actually probably don't feel like drawing. So you have to overcome your unwillingness at first, which can be very hard too. I know that if I don't just start drawing now, 
chances are I don't draw the entire rest of the day. Even though I know that after a few minutes I always enjoy it and it's always relaxing for me. Well, this kind of turned into some kind of draw and talk episode. Very unstructured and all over the place, but yeah, I hope it was helpful for you. I know there are not a lot of people who watch my illustration videos and I mostly do them for myself to feel a little less stuck in the bullet journaling niche, if that makes sense. But if anyone is here and still watching, thank you so much and please let me know your thoughts. And if you enjoyed this format, feel free to let me know other topics you'd like to hear me ramble about. And here's the final illustration. I hope you like it as much as I do. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Again, thank you so much for watching till the end and have a wonderful rest of your day.